Hey guys, so the enemy of farming or homesteading or homeschooling or gardening or anything like that is lethargy. And right now I'm feeling lethargy. I'm out here and I have all my supplies, everything's ready to go, and yet I just don't want to finish anything. I have all these projects and I'm just like, oh, it's kind of cold out here and yeah, I don't really want to be out here and what good will it do because it's January and that's not the right way to think. So I'm out here and I'm gonna do the simplest thing first. I'm gonna put the cage up for the ducks so that they can't fly over the um, fence and we're gonna get it moved and I already filmed this once and my battery died on me. So you didn't get to see me. I moved the cage, I moved the fence and I moved the duck house and I moved it, I got everything ready and blah. You guys can see I don't have a lot of sunlight back here and on top of that my compost looks terrible. It's one of the reasons I like to plant into my compost pile is that I lay it out in layers and then I just put the next layer on top. With this one the kids have been helping me and if it was a normal compost pile you couldn't put it like that. You couldn't have it like all over the place. Um, when I put them in this one I will lay them flat. I'll take off any tape but um, where we've had cold weather I haven't done that yet, I've just had the kids come out and stick it on top of the compost pile. Um, so now I get to rearrange it. Now I'm going to use these short screws. It's not that I'm trying to dumb anything down for you guys, it's that I try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, and so I keep everything simple. I like to build everything out of the same materials. This is plumber's tape and it works well to fasten things onto wood. Sometimes I've even used them as hinges. You wanna take and have two small holes with one big one in the middle. And that way, what you're using, I don't know if these are gonna work, I may have to have actual, what do I usually use? Usually for these, what I'll use is um, tin snips. So I will have to get my tin snips now. Okay. Um, what you'll notice is that I get up and I get down and I move around a lot when I do this. It's one of the reasons why when I'm on a farm, I don't exercise in a gym. This bed is a little higher than I like. I prefer that it is exactly the dimensions of a 
um, palette as far as width and height. So I don't think it's going to be quite as nice as it usually is because it's just it's just not quite the right dimensions. But we're going to do our best. Another thing you could do here is just using furring strip if this was a little bit lower which I'm kind of tempted just to make it a little bit lower so that it'll all go together a little better. I'm so tempted just to do that. Uh, I don't know if it's worth it. Then I like to assembly line it a little bit by Now again, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. The way that I'm doing it is pretty inexpensive and it gives me some materials that I can use over in other um, parts if I decide I don't like the way that I did this. Uh, there are so many farms out there that you see where somebody goes into hobby farming or homesteading and they use all these really nice materials and then they find out they don't like to keep pigs. And so what are they gonna do with all these poured concrete pads and these super nice outbuildings that now they've decided not to homestead anymore. So I do like to make temporary structures and trial run things rather than just assuming that I'm going to want to do it forever. Um, and again, the reason I use all these types of materials is because once I take them apart, I can use them again for anything. Again, furring strips would be way easier. You just take the long strip and you put a little bit of overage on the wire. So you'd want a piece of wire above a little bit of a strand and then you put on your furring strip and and put that in and that would hold it up and be much less tedious than what I'm doing now and it would require fewer screws it would just be it would just be better all around but this is what I have so this is what I'm doing Okay, so hopefully the color on this is better. I We went and had the camera cleaned a couple days ago and I didn't realize that he'd set my camera on manual instead of automatic, so no wonder we've been so dark lately. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the cardboard in and I'm gonna see how much I can get put in here. It doesn't need to be layered at this point because the leaves will heat up no matter what. If we actually water it with some nitrogen, it'll heat up even more. So at this point, I'm kinda thinking I wanna put cardboard along the sides just to help a little bit in holding things in. And I did go and get a pitchfork because they're essential when you're moving compost. I know it looks awful right now. I know that it does. It looks like garbage. It looks like junk. But once it's all held together, maybe when I get a few more boards up here, it'll look a lot better. 
and the neighbor has actually offered us a little composting system that I might put food scraps in just because I see that the kids are not keeping them to inside. I have asked them to, but kids, the kids help a lot with everything, and so um, I don't like to tell them they're doing it wrong. Okay. This is how Julie died. This is a power line up here, and I'm trying to get things clipped down so that they're not weighing down the power line. So this year I'm going to try and do something like what Lucky Robin has done, where she does her raised beds and she manages it intensively. So rather than having big rows that you have to weed a lot, I'm going to put cardboard down first and then I will have a layer of some kind of mulch and rabbit manure so that I don't have to add so much dirt because buying dirt is very expensive. So if you can allow your rabbit manure to turn some mulch into dirt, I find that to be really nice. Only the step top six inches of my grow bed will have to be soil. And I do find that really the huge benefit that I'm the most in love with about rabbits isn't necessarily the neat self-reliance part of it. It is just that that manure makes my soil usable. And in the summer and spring, when we're, uh, when we're raising rabbits, I take uh, cuttings from my living fence, I take cuttings from my fruit trees, and all of the weeds that I get from anywhere that I am weeding go to the rabbits so that we're feeding them very, very little in the way of store-bought feed. Winter is the most expensive time to be raising rabbits. However, because I need their manure so badly, I'm willing to put the food into them in winter to get all that manure so that I can build my hotbeds. Rabbit manure is a lot easier to move 
and rabbits are a lot easier to move than other livestock. And so moving a set of rabbits to where I use manure the most is the way that I work that. I, in the in the spring, I actually move cages of rabbits up underneath our willow tree in the front so that I have manure for my swale. Okay, so I'm gonna make up some new labels. I go through these very, very quickly. So yes, I do save these all year round. chicken is telling that cat off. This is the time of year when I am putting my herbs because it can take up to three months for some of them to just germinate. So I have my herbs here and now what I'm going to do is start some of my colder vegetables. So I have kohlrabi, cabbage, Swiss chard, kale. So that by the time it's just a little bit warmer and the sun is in the sky a little bit longer during the day, I will be able to take these starts out and plant them over the top of that hotbed in soil that's about six to eight inches deep and the soil will stay warm at night even though it's really really cold outside and that heat will keep those plants from freezing so that's why I'm getting these started it's much easier to start them in the house than it is to try and get them to sprout and germinate out in the greenhouse and that's because uh, you want warmer temperatures for germination than just for plants that are already started. These are my little seed containers. They're just bead boxes. And I like them because I can see when I'm starting to run out of things. And I can also put families together, families. So I have bok choy and cabbage and hybrid cabbage and all sorts of, uh, and Brussels sprouts all in the same place. Now, if you were gonna be a seed saver, this might not be the way you wanna do it because you if, if by accident a seed gets into the wrong thing and it belongs to a different family, it's going to cross-pollinate when you think you have them segregated. So if you're going to save seeds, you might want to have them in something more like this. This is a fly tying container and it has a very secure lid and only one of them is open at a time. And I still keep them in families. These are Swiss chard and spinach. So they're still in a family of what they do and what grows out of them but it's not like a little cap can get flipped up and they can get confused about who goes where. So if they're super teeny tiny seeds, I just keep a corner of the seed packet and fold the seeds up into it. And then I put them in here and that way they're not falling out. I still have the little stickers on top. And I like to tamp the soil down and then sprinkle a little bit of soil over the top. So I've already tamped all these down once, and this is so that it has good contact with the soil and so that the seeds don't move around. And these ones, like the cabbages and, cabbages and the kohlrabis, you can plant multiple seeds in one little square and then just split them out when you um, upgrade them to their own little square to be ready to go out into the greenhouse. And even if you guys don't like to grow cabbages, your livestock will love cabbages. Same thing goes for squash and pumpkins they're just they have a lot of nutrition in them they're easy to grow they love to just be alive and especially with the cabbages if you get uh, the cabbage worms and everything in them it doesn't matter the chickens will eat them because they have the cabbage worms in them when I've had them in my garden before and I had one that had an infestation the chickens had wandered in and the first place they went to was those worm infested cabbages and they just ate the cabbage down trying to get to those worms it was kind of fun to watch so I'm going to go ahead and get a few of these started in here. One of my favorite things to grow is bok choy. In our climate, it does really, really well. It doesn't bolt. It has lovely succulent leaves. I just adore it. Asian greens are some of my favorites. They're just really, really resilient little little vegetables. I really like sorrel because it helps with sunstroke in animals. If they just get too hot, you can feed your goats. If they, if they start to have real problems with sunstroke, you feed your, your goats, your animals, some sorrel. And it'll pull them right out of it. Okay, so this one is ready to go. I'm gonna bring it over here. and put it into my window. 
Now, the reason that I absolutely love Swiss chard, because that's what I'm going to put in now, the reason I love it so much is that it's cut and come again, and it gives you greens without having to worry about it bolting. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of uh, six, six cell trays out of My, let's see, some spinach, some chard, some chard, and then some more kohlrabi because I just love all of those things. We love kohlrabi. It is like a turnip that grows above ground. You peel it and it tastes so good. It tastes so good. And then I'll show you how I do this. I find with these kind of seeds, like the cabbages and the Swiss chard, that I really do need to pat them down very well, and maybe even water them in to get them to water them in from the top to get them to sink down a little bit. If if I find that if I don't really make sure they make really good contact with the soil and have enough soil over the top of them when they start to germinate, that they come up very weak and leggy, and that they don't put on good strong stems. And so I will put them in, I will press them down, I will work them into the soil, and then I will put more dirt over the top. Because they just do so much better if they have enough soil around their roots that they have that support as they start to grow up. Because like with kohlrabi, all the growth is above ground, and so they really, you really need to make sure that they have strong enough root system to hold up all of that weight and that they're not leggy. It's just really, really, really important with these top heavy plants. Yep, it has been one day, so two days ago I planted these. It's been not quite 24 hours. And my bok choy and my cabbage are already coming up. It's really nice and warm in here. It feels really good. It's not that cold outside. It's probably in the 20s outside, but it's um, about 50 degrees in here, so it feels really good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and build a simple frame, and the point of the frame is that when I put more rabbit manure on top, it's gonna be thicker because otherwise, once the roots of the plant start to get down into the straw, the straw is gonna be just carbon, and it'll starve the plants. They won't have anything to eat. It's sterile.